You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast with Melissa Klug and Jen Obermeyer. Thank you so much for joining in. Our mission is to broaden the horizons of savvy business women in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. So now, let's get started. We are so excited to be on the Pro Organizer Studio podcast today with a special guest who is talking to us about all of the important things about planning for 2021. So we'd like to welcome our guest, Carly Tizano. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me back. Well, so we have had quite a year this year. I don't think there's anybody probably listening to this podcast that is like, what happened this year? (laughs) So um, I think when there were a lot of us that were planning for the year 2020, and we had all these big plans and big goals, and then obviously those changed quite dramatically. But one of the things that you want to talk to us about today is 2021 planning, and maybe talk about a few of the things that people might not be thinking about. So we want to get into that in a second, but uh, I want to ask you a little bit about, I know you've been on the podcast before, but for anybody who's new, tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to us. Yeah, so I'm Carly Tizano. I now work primarily as a New Year's resolution coach, helping women to who struggle to keep their resolutions reach their goals this year and every year. So I started out in organizing, and actually I still kind of run my organizing company behind the scenes. And through doing that, over the course of that process, I realized how much of working with people in their homes is coaching them through these bigger issues that they struggle with. Because not only are their homes a mess, but it's the the real issue with that is it's keeping them from doing the things that they really want to do in their life and making progress on those things. And so many of the people, we, we would work through all the things in their home, but then they would still not be making progress on those things that really mattered to them. And so I started to work with them on that. And that kind of spiraled out into a whole different coaching business. And I went and got certified as a life coach through the life coach school. And so it's kind of been, at least to me, what seems like a natural progression into what I do now and still running organizing business on the side, because I love that too. But I really have a great passion to help those people make progress on the things that really matter to them and that they find themselves making the same resolutions year after year, or they have a big goal and they really want to achieve it, but they just don't really know how to take the steps to get there. And so that's really what I found that I love to do. I love that. I uh, have given some talks to people who want to be professional organizers. And the question I get asked a lot is what did you, what surprised you about, you know, being a professional organizer? And I always say, that it's not about the stuff, it's the psychology behind the stuff Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that you end up being someone's therapist. And you're exactly right, is that it's not the stuff in their house, it's really all of the things behind it and learning how to make those goals and really achieve those goals is critical. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I think that's why so many people want to get organized even if they don't realize that's the reason behind everything else. Right. Absolutely. So Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how you chose to make that pivot too. So as people look at, you know, this is a little bit off topic, but as people look at what is the future of my organizing career or my career in general, how did you decide that that was the path that you wanted to take? Well, the first thing I want to say is don't be afraid to pivot because I know that I had a lot of anxiety and uh, self-doubt as I was going into that. And I'm really lucky that I have a lot of women in business who I look up to who I've seen make pivots. Some have been small and some have been larger. And so that really inspired me that it's okay to do this. Just because I started this business doesn't mean I can't also do something else or I can't move predominantly into working with people in a different capacity because I'm still me and I still have the same ultimate goals to serve my clients and to love them and to help them reach their big goals. I'm just doing it through a different way now. So for me, it was just kind of that exploration of what I love to do, not being afraid to experiment and working with people in different ways, kind of adding service offerings. Coaching was first a part of my organizing business. So it was just another service that I offered. And so I think it's like so much of the rest of business is all experimentation. It's all trying out new things and seeing what it is we really want to do and how best we can serve the people that we want to serve. And really knowing what you're good at and what your strengths are. And if this is something that you felt was a strength of your organizing business, recognizing that and saying, hey, there's something else I can do with this and being creative about that, I think is critical. Yeah, absolutely. Because we can all be so successful in so many things. It just takes that the wherewithal to keep trying and to keep experimenting and to 
to be willing to let ourselves say, okay, well, I'm going to go do this over here now because this is what I want to try. And so that flexibility is is necessary not only in an organizing solution, but in our lives as well. Absolutely. Well, and fear is something that we talk about a lot and getting over that fear of uh, trying something new or taking a leap. And I always try to tell myself, because I have those same, we all have those same voices, right? And just like, so what's the worst thing that could happen? I try something new and it might not work. And I decide that it's not something, not a path I want to go down, but what's the best thing that can happen? We may find that we have a great new direction to go in, like it's like you have so yeah the the biggest reason that a lot of people don't take that jump is fear and ultimately it's the fear of what we're going to think about ourselves and what we're going to make any failure mean about ourselves and that's the same reason why a lot of people don't set big goals and don't move towards those big goals is because not even necessarily the fact that they won't get there because most of us will if we keep working at it and we keep trying it's what we're going to make all those failures along the way mean about us and then in the process making those mean so much that we just stop moving forward at all Right. Okay. So you talked about the word, the big word goals, and let's talk a little bit about what kind of coaching you give people. So you say you're a new year's resolution coach. So tell us a little bit more about what goals are to you and how you work on goals with clients. Absolutely. Well, I think that goals are really just one piece of the big puzzle. And so I walk my clients through what I call the resolve framework. So it's kind of a framework that I created to help us figure out where in the process we're at and then where we're going next. So the first step of the Resolve framework is the dream step. And so that's when we are kind of hypothesizing and dreaming about what what life it is that we want to create. What direction is it that we're heading? What are What's the big picture perspective that we want to keep? And so then the second step in the Resolve process is the goal step. So that's when we turn these big picture ideas and dreams into things that are concrete and manageable that we can actually achieve. So that's the difference between like, I want to travel more and I want to go on three trips this year. It's turning it into something you're going to know when you achieve that. And so then the next step in the resolve process is the planning step. So this is when we move from, I want to take three big trips to when are those trips going to be? What are they going to look like? Where am I going to go? Who am I going to go with? It's taking those then even smaller steps to make those goals real. And so then that leads us to the final step of the resolve process, which is the reality step. So that's when we've gotten it all done we've reached the end of the road and those dreams are now reflected in the reality of our life. I love that. Well, and that whole idea of creating, like, what does your ideal life look like? What is your ideal situation? That's something that can actually help people in the organizing process too. So if someone's listening to this and, you know, they all they want to do is organize people's houses, which is awesome. You can do that same step with clients and say, what do you want your house to look like when you're done? And that dream step is a great way to have people be able to say like, okay, I can power through these challenges because I know what's at the end. So dreaming big and then getting it down to the small things. So what part do clients struggle with the most in that process that you just laid out? Do you, do you have people that struggle with making the big thing into something granular? It's normally the biggest issue normally is kind of moving from the goal to the plan because we, we think it's all about the goal. Like if we have the right planner to write down our goal in, or if we have the right structure to our goal or the right timeline, then the rest is going to be easy. But it's really transitioning from that what to the how. And that's where I think a lot of our brains like to hiccup because we've never done this before. So of course, we're not going to know how we're going to get there because we've never done it before. It makes a lot of sense, but our brain likes to freak out. <laughs> so yes. we, have to, we have to create a plan that takes into account the fact that we don't necessarily know how we're going to get there. And that along the way, we're probably going to have a lot of those failures that we talked about and in a way kind of reverse engineering from those failures to how we get where we want to go. So in this process, so when someone develops one of those plans, do you look back, do you have them take uh, accountability and say, okay, this maybe this piece of the plan hasn't worked. So I need to create a new plan. Like, is there a step in the process where you reevaluate those plans and say, okay, maybe I need to, to change this a little bit. Yeah. So one of everyone's plan is going to be different because we're all different people and we all have different goals. And what's cool is that even if you and I had the exact same goal, then the way the plan that we're going to need to get there is probably totally different. So the method that I like to use to help my, my clients come up with their plan is what I call the overcoming obstacles method. So you start by writing down everything you think is going to stand in the way of you getting to your goal. So for people who want to get organized, and I think these are the big issues, like I don't know what containers to use, and I just like all the stuff that I own, I want to keep all of it, and 
I, I've never been able to do this before and I maybe need to hire help, but I don't know where to start. So like to them, those are the really big obstacles. And for someone running a business, it's stuff like, I don't know how to market. I need to make a website and I've never done that before. Do I need to join networking groups? Like what even is that? What podcast should I like? There's so many things. And so writing all of those down, asking yourself if I was going to fail, why would that be? So kind of asking yourself all these leading questions to get a very concrete list of the, the things you think are going to come up along the way, the things you need to learn that you, you don't know how to do, the things you don't know you don't know how to do, that you don't know how to do, all of those things. And so that, those things show you the exact steps you need to take that if you figure all of those things out and if you work on changing your thoughts all along the way, those are the exact steps you need to take to get where you want to go. So we even, we use our failures or our potential failures as kind of creating the path that we need to walk down to get that goal achieved. I love that because I do think that there are people that stop forward progress because they just think about all the potential bad things that could happen. <laughs> like, well, I'll never mm -hmm. be successful at losing weight or I'll never be successful at X, Y, Z. Like you have predetermined your outcome before you even start. So I think acknowledging those potential failure points and then figuring out how to get past them. Like that's sort of next level thinking. I love that. Well, and it's so helpful then because then when you do have a failure along the way or something comes up or something takes longer than you thought it was going to take, you already know exactly what you need to do because you've done it to get to the point you're already at. Right. Um, it's just like, oh, look, here's one more little thing I didn't know I was going to come across, but and it's just a pebble instead of a mountain and you know what to do with it. Right. So do you have, in, in the process that you use and then working with clients, do you have a specific number of goals that you recommend for people, like the big goals? Because I think sometimes people get overwhelmed with, well, I have 25 things, I have 25 huge things I want to do. Do you have a sweet spot of the number of goals that people can achieve, just trying to be realistic about how many things they can achieve in a certain time period? Yeah. So one thing I walk my clients through when they work with me, I have a little course that they go through that kind of walks them through what we all think it is. Like if I have the right goal, then the rest is easy. So I walk them through figuring out what the right goal for them is going to be, even though that's not kind of our key component to getting it achieved. But it really just depends, I think, on what people want. I talk about impossible goals, which is when you kind of go into the coming year, almost setting yourself up for failure because it's something you really don't think you're going to achieve and you may not in the coming year, but it's more about the person you're going to become through the process of working towards this impossible goal. That's really why you do it. And then you may achieve it along the way, but that's just kind of the bonus. Or some people like to do, this year it was a 20 for 2020 list. So it's like 20 goals that they want to work on. And so there are a few big things on there, but most of them are kind of like routine things that they want to get done or check off. So for me, like getting my enhanced driver's license was on my 20 for 20 list. And so yes. next year it'll be a 21 for 2021 list. Some people just want kind of a bigger picture perspective. They want just like a mantra for the year or a theme for the year. And then they might accomplish little things along the year under, over the course of the year that fall under that mantra, but they just kind of want that, that bigger picture perspective to go into the year with. And so I think some people might be approaching 2021 that way. Like, I don't know what's going to come, but this is the attitude or this is the perspective that I want to bring into the year. And then everything I get done is going to relate back to that because that's kind of what I'm going to be remembering and having in the back of my head but I don't have any particular goals that I want to achieve. Not necessarily that you can't have particular goals for 2021 because I believe that you can. And some people just have a normal goal. Like they want to lose 25 pounds or they want to write a book and those are totally okay too. I love that idea of the year of. What, like, I was reading an article about the actress Rebel Wilson, who uh, this year she declared she declares a year every year, and this year was the year of health, and so she did you know all these things to improve her health. And I love that concept of you can have an overarching. It's the year of blank, but you can also put underneath that. Like for me, I think 2021 is going to be the year of wellness. And so that includes health goals, but that also includes making my business run more efficiently, or you can mm -hmm. put a lot of things under that umbrella of the year of blah. So yeah. And kind of the next step of that is then choosing each month to have like a different focus. So if you want to do the year of health or wellness, then maybe one month you focus on exercise and next, the next month you focus on sleep. And then the next month you focus on healthy eating. And then the next month you focus on business and how working there, like what times of day should you be working there to optimize how you best work? And then how does that flow into the times you're giving yourself to rest and have off? So you can totally play around with it and it can be whatever you want. You can just have the higher minded that this is my year of health or wellness, or you can have this month, I'm going to focus on this to kind of be the representation of that in my life. So 
obviously this year has been a, a huge challenge. <laughs> and I, I actually, I saw a TikTok from this comedian the other day who found her 2020 list of goals. And she was <laughs> literally crying laughing because her goals were like travel more and, you know, eat less and blah, blah. She had all these goals that were kind of torpedoed by 2020. So mm -hmm. I think just trying to be realistic and trying to be honest, there are a lot of people that feel maybe a little sad about how this year has turned out or frustrated or or there have been tremendous challenges thrown at every person. So what kind of message do you have for people about, hey, how can we approach goal setting going into 2021 and not, not fail to acknowledge that 2020 was a crazy year and not acknowledge that there might still be challenges in 2021, but give us a little bit of what is your philosophy on planning for what could potentially be another crazy year? Yeah, I think it's definitely shaping up to look like it's going to be pretty crazy. So I think the first thing is just to be realistic. It's not fun or sexy to say that, but it's just true. It's true. And I mean, going into 2020, we didn't know what was coming. And so we couldn't have necessarily been realistic. But right now we have to take, go into the coming year with what we know. And so we know that 2020 is probably not going to be the year for big travel. For some people, it may not be the year of losing 25 pounds because they want to keep eating Oreos, and that's okay. So just Great. being realistic, yeah, and honest with yourself about what you want the coming year to look at. And so maybe that means you can go super hard into a different area of your life. Maybe that means you can exercise every single day because you have a little bit of extra time that you're home. It doesn't have to be, but maybe it could be. Maybe it's the year you go super hard in your business, and maybe you write the book you've really wanted to, or maybe you implement Dubsado or another client management tool that you ha just haven't had time to. So I think it's first just being realistic and honest. The reason so many people struggle to set goals is because they don't have the self-trust that it's actually going to get done when they set the goal. And that's kind of why you keep re your New Year's resolutions, why you set goals is to build that self-trust and self-confidence that when you say you're going to do something, it's as good as done. So the other piece of advice I would give is if you don't think you're going to be able to achieve anything you really want to in 2021, then don't give yourself that permission and the space to just breathe. So you can go into the year and say, your goal is rest. Like that's going to be your mantra for the year. And then you're going to build a life that kind of reflects that, but it doesn't have to be doing anything big. Um, it doesn't even have to be anything that requires any effort. It could be rest and you could plan to spend your year watching Netflix. That's okay. So bringing the realistic and the honesty along with us, then we can kind of create, okay, I do want to have some big goals then we can begin to determine what those are going to be. And it's totally dependent on you and the stage of business you're in. But I think that's when we can come back to the resolve process and think about, okay, what, what dreams do we have? What's the life that we want to create? And then in the coming year, what are some steps that we can realistically and honestly believe we can move, move towards and then move into the goal stage of defining what those are and how we're going to know when we get there. Um, so I think that's, that's kind of the way we can begin to approach it. And then being willing to give ourselves the grace that we need along the way when things come up, but also being willing to persist because there are definitely big things we can do. Um, we can keep making progress. And no matter what comes our way, there are some people who've done massive things in 2020 and you may have been one of them and that's so exciting. So it's worth celebrating the things that you have been able to do this year and also looking forward to know that you can do big things next year, no matter what comes up. Well, I love two things, two specific things that you said that I love. The first concept is grace and giving yourself that permission that it, it's okay just to kind of get by right now. If that's what you need, you've got to be mm -hmm. honest with yourself that like, maybe you are not going to be a, an award-winning sourdough bread baker, <laughs> like or people on Instagram or, mm -hmm. but then also just that concept of you can also do big things if you want to and celebrating those little wins. I had something very small that happened to me the other day and I had a friend that was like going on and on about it. And I was like, is this really kind of a tiny thing? And she's like, no, this is a year where you need to celebrate little things. And she really kind of snapped me out of it and said like, no, please celebrate this win. And so it's allowing yourself to say, I'm going to take these wins wherever they come. Absolutely. And to me, that's a big part of building self-trust too, because we think, oh, when I do this, it's going to be so exciting and I'm going to, I don't know, go out to dinner. Maybe, maybe you can't do that right, right. now, but I'm <laughs> going to do something big to celebrate. And then it comes. And since we've taken so many little steps leading up to it, it's just kind of like, eh, yeah, that was, 
the next thing. It was inevitable. I was going to get there anyway. But taking that time to really celebrate and honor all the hard work you put in, all of the effort you put in, it, it's so worth it because that's showing yourself, I do celebrate myself. I do celebrate my accomplishments. This does matter. When I do something cool, then that matters to me. This is what I want. This is the person I want to become. Instead of just kind of sweeping it under the rug because we've all been there and we all do it, especially with the things that feel like they don't matter. But even sometimes yeah. when the big things happen, they're just not as exciting in the moment, but we can make them exciting in the moment and we have to honor them in that way or we're going to be less inclined to do it for ourselves next time. So how often do you recommend that people do kind of an accountability check-in or how often should people be looking at these goals that they're creating, the goals and the plans and all of the things underneath them? That's a great question. It kind of goes back, I think, to to the scope or the scale of what it is you're planning. If you have like a 21 for 2021 list, you're gonna to wanna to be checking in on that more often. If you have a big mantra like wellness or rest, and you don't want to really give yourself parameters within that of what that's gonna look like, then you can probably write that on a sticky note and stick it on your bathroom mirror. And that kind of low level prompting is gonna get you to live that out throughout the course of the year. I say at least once, once a month, you should be going over your list. If you have kind of a longer list and more things you want to accomplish, I like to go over mine probably once a week, just kind of to read through it. And even if I haven't been able necessarily to check anything off to say, oh yeah, I was working towards this one or re realize if I haven't moved towards any in a few weeks, mm, I should probably reassess and determine which one I want to start with, what I need to be doing to make progress on these. And it's great too, to have a friend to share your list or the things you want to be working on and to text each other every week or two and say, hey, how are you doing? Or what, what are you doing with this one? I know that was the one you were tackling next. And that external accountability is what a lot of people need to kind of start making that progress. Yeah, accountability is key because I am the kind of person that needs, I need support and I need a little bit of cheerleading. And I think a lot of people are like that. And when you are vulnerable enough to ask for an accountability partner, I think it's super, it's been super helpful for me anyway, as someone, I'm not someone that loves to set goals. And so I'm trying, I have a goal to be better at setting goals. <laughs> and, and so, but I have found some accountability partners on a few things and that has been a major, major game changer. Do you recommend that people look for people in their network or a good friend, or can you talk a little bit about accountability partners that people can work with? Yeah, I think what you guys do in Inspired Organizer is so great having someone who, whether or not they're kind of at the exact same stage of business with you, someone who's in the same industry as you're creating your business goals with each other and working towards them. I think that's something super powerful. So it depends kind of on if you are doing like a running goal and you want someone to run with, then clearly you're going to need someone probably who lives close to you and probably who likes to run and is willing to run with you. I've had any range of people who I just work with on business goals and they're just my business accountability partner. And then I have friends who I, we kind of keep more personal goals with each other. And so that's something too, it kind of increases the level of vulnerability that you have to be vulnerable with all these different people, but it creates kind of that level of connection and the vulnerability is never just one way. It creates that unique and dynamic relationship that gets to grow as you do because you're all kind of making progress together. And that's something that's super powerful. So I would say just kind of assess what it is your goal is for the year or your goals if you have multiple and determine then who, who you want to bring along in that journey with you and not to be afraid to reach out to someone um, in business or to a friend or even a family member, especially if you're quarantined with them, maybe you can all kind of right. make progress together. So there is definitely no wrong person. Sometimes people say if you have someone who's too close to you, then sometimes they can't provide as strict of accountability because it's kind of like you're them. And so when they tell you to do something or that remind you what you wanted to do this thing, then you yep. just kind of brush it off. So something you want to keep that in mind, maybe not like a spouse or a parent or something like that. That might be a little too close. So going to that next level of removed, and I'm sure you can find so many people who would just love to come alongside you in that way. And to build your relationship that way is something really special. So tell us a little bit about what um, working with you looks like. So if people are listening to this and saying, man, I, I really need all of this, but tell us a little bit about your process and how people can work with you. So I'm launching my Resolve Coaching Program for 2021. It starts in January and it is a year long program because I found that a year is really the shortest amount of time to have the biggest amount of impact in someone's life. To be committed to yourself and your goals for a year and creating a plan on how to get there. It takes 
a year really to make that progress and along the way you build so much self-trust and self-confidence and that's what it really is all about both this year and all the years going forward to know that when you write down your resolution you're going to keep it because 77 percent of people give up on their resolution by the second week of january and right you don't want to be one of those people probably yeah <laughs> if you have a business and you are setting big goals you don't want to be giving up by january 8th you want to keep going you want to keep making progress and so i like to say i help my clients keep their resolutions to december 31st and then they're ready to move on to whatever it is they want to tackle the next year. So working with me is just that over the course of a year, we're going to work through the resolve process from your dreams to your goal, to your plan, to making those things reality in your life and coaching on all the things that come up. Cause whether we're, how we have goals for business or fitness or other things, there are so many things that come up that are related to that. Even if we don't realize it, whether it's money or relationships, our lives are so interconnected. And so even if you just have one, Tiny goal, it seems, in one area of your life. So many other things are connected to that, and that's okay. Well, Jen and I talked today, yesterday about, she was telling a story on the podcast about how she, an organizer, needed to hire an organizing person to help her with something that she just couldn't, she had a mindset block that she couldn't get past. And mm -hmm. so I think that we also need to know like what our strengths are and hiring a coach, hiring someone like you to help you with something that you know, is maybe standing in your way I think is really important to growth and knowing that, Hey, if I'm not good at setting goals, I need someone to teach me how to do it. And yes, there are certainly ways you could do that on your own, just like organizing, but we need someone to be able to help us on that path. So. Yeah. It's like that outside perspective. When you, when you hire someone who's expert, you know, you're going to get there so much faster and the road is going to be so much smoother as opposed to like DIYing it, which you certainly can do, but yep. having someone along for the ride is more fun and you're probably going to get there a little faster. Absolutely. So where can people find you on the great wide internet? Yeah. So they can find me at carlytizano.com or at carlytizano on Instagram or Facebook. So it's C-A-R-L-Y-T-I-Z-Z-A-N-O. And I always offer free goal setting calls. So you can come on and jump on a call with me and we can make sure you're ready to start 2021 on the right foot. Awesome. And do you have a workshop coming up, I believe? I do. Um, kind of going off a lot, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff we talked about here, I'm teaching a setting your best resolutions webinar for 2021. And so if you want to sign up for that, I will give the link to you guys and you can put it in the show notes. Maybe I would love to have any of you guys there to, to make sure you are ready for the coming year, no matter what, <laughs> no matter what it brings. Yeah. I, so I have a client who has something that she calls boss October where the whole month of October, she just does stuff that she puts off for kind of the rest of the year. And <laughs> I just, I love that concept, but I also love the concept of in December, we can come to your workshop and really understand more about how can we put these goals and, and resolutions in place and really be successful in what could be another crazy year, but let's own the crazy. Yeah, we're going to make the crazy work for us. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. So, well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we will put all of Carly's links in the show notes and we'll make sure that you know exactly how to attend her workshop when it comes up in December. Thank you, Carly, for joining us. Thanks again for having me. Thank you so much for listening in to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to get our roadmap for success as a pro organizer, head straight to www.poroadmap.com.